Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 396. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to uh, answer the questions uh, um, asked on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight we have Tim Kappa. Uh, Tim uh, is... Uh, the CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. Um, he recently, his company recently won an award as the best local consultant in Middle Earth. Um, <laughs> and um, Richard Hearn uh, is also with us. Richard uh, is a, a gun for hire. He's uh, um, he mainly deals with upper echelon sites um, around the world. I'm very lucky to have him with us. Uh, and Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's also a Google Top contributor on the uh, uh, AdSense uh, community. And Tim is a Google, no, it's not Google Top contributor, it's a Google product expert. Uh, and uh, Tim Kappa is a Google product expert on the um, Google My Business community. All right, let's uh, have a look at the, we've got six questions tonight. We um, are just waiting for the first one to come up. Don't tell me I've broken the system. Um, Nathan Gedai, <clears throat> he could almost be an Australian, couldn't he? G'day. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, it's titled, Can Disallowing Patient, uh, Pages in Robots Text and No Indexing Affect Page Rank? Um, uh, he said, uh, if, if I no index a bunch of old blog posts from the 90s, can that affect page rank negatively? This is one of my favorite, favorite areas. You know, it actually, it can. And there's a there's a genuine reason for that. If you, if you block a page on your site with robots.txt and you link to that page, the page rank will pass across those links, but it's sunk into the page because it can't pass back out. So I refer to it always as sunk page rank. It's something that I always think people should avoid. If, if, if you're gonna, if you're gonna block access by a robot attack you shouldn't be linking to the resource in the first place in a way that passes page rank and no index is probably a little bit similar because i think google after a while when they see it for long enough they just say well we'll just treat it as if it's sort of like no follow the links on the page and again that's the same thing you're if you have internal no follow it just sinks page rank so the answer i i think my opinion is the answer has to be yes thank you richard Yeah, well, uh, uh, looking at the, the title, uh, there's, there's no, it, it, literally, no indexing, does no indexing affect page rank? Well, yes. It, um, he, I, I see, like, in some, of the, in some of the comments there, he says he's got 150,000 old posts from the 90s, and he's considering archiving them. I, I see what the position he's in. He's worried about the, the, the links that are could be pointing at some of that stuff and how he might lose the links. And it's a real, it's a very tough one. Like it's, unless he can figure out a way to identify what he should keep and then potentially either redirect it to something newer or keep it, it's so tricky. I, I've, I, I've dealt with this sort of situation where you've got a huge volume of content that's really old and what do you do? And you just worry when you say to a client, well, you could just unpublish it, just let it decay with a 404 or whatever. And you just have to say to them, you know, it's, it is, there is a risk there. So it's horrible to have that risk. And yeah, it's really tricky. The only thing I could suggest is that he, he tries to do an audit of, of that, that corpus of pages, that 150,000 pages looks to see if any of the sort of third party tools will show them which have links and figure out which are worth keeping or redirecting and then i just kill the rest 
Like if he's not getting traffic to it, if that 150,000 pages, if it's not generating a lot of search traffic, there's a good chance that Google probably doesn't even index some of it because it's not easy to support that much content from that that from that era because generally the the internal like navigation of a site something that old it'll be so many clicks down within the site so yeah it's a tricky one I, I wouldn't like to have that that challenge really but it can definitely hurt page rank for sure thank you Richie all right, uh, we go to the next one. Oh, gee, I hope we... <clears throat> okay. Um, this one is titled, Is There Any Way I Can Get Justice? Well, no, I, I haven't had any luck myself. Um, Conjul Chawthon um, uh, asked the question. He said, a, a very popular website having a domain authority of 90 stole my content. Uh, actually, they spun it and shamelessly used a screenshot from my blog. Uh, is there any way I can get justice? I'm in awe that such a huge website would do something like that. Um. Mm, it's a bit tricky. So, I mean, they spun the con. Uh, I'm guessing it. Yeah, I mean, these spinners aren't great. So, I'm guessing it. There will be sections of it which are pretty much exactly the same. Plus, they've got that screenshot. So, the first thing I would do is try and DMCA it. You know, in in that sense. Um, also, also check the source of the page. Sometimes people are stupid enough to actually have copied a chunk of it or an internal link or something on there which can actually then be completely, um, you know, proved when you're trying to DMCA it that it actually was yours. Um, but because it's been spun, you're going to have to sort of put the two and two together and then highlight sections of it. Uh, with a DMCA, they need a sort of a certain percentage that they can sort of literally say, yeah, that is what we believe to be copied, but mm, it all depends on how shamelessly or, you know, on how well they, they, they spun it. Um, yeah. But yeah, it happens, man. Sorry, I go after the screenshot. If the image, if they're using the same image file, that's what I'd go after. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it depends on what the screenshot is exactly. But if it's something that he can show that he has rights to, as in he he created it in some way, and that yeah. it, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's an original piece of work that that's his, that's what what you can go after. And you can probably get the page taken down if if he can show the the, the screenshot was taken was was still lifted from him. Potentially, he may not. He may, they may just say, "Yeah, we'll take down the screenshot and, and bye bye." But that's probably the way to go at it. If he does want to go at it, and then he probably doesn't even want to go at it. It's probably not worth it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do. Sorry, Mister Tucky. Yeah, I'm actually agree with Richard. I think image file is actually the easiest one because it's easy to prove um if it's one to one it's the same um when text is spun then uh it does become i think trickier so if yeah if if they are copying the image i think you have a better chance with dmca um and if it's a kind of site that is doing a lot of this from different sources, then the chances are that many people are complaining about it. And that may sort of work in your favor as well in the medium term. I have another suggestion actually for him. Um, he could also approach the site who probably don't realize that the content was lifted from him in some way. Like there's probably an editor that doesn't know. The editor just takes the content from a third party he could probably say, well, look, this is actually lifted from me. Um, why don't you, like, how about you give me a link? 
you know, just to show that this is actually where it came from. I'll let you use my image. Here's that's that image. Look, that's the image that's actually published on my site. Um, you're ha I'm happy for you to keep it, but please just give me a link to show that actually it was sourced from here. This is the original, the origin of this this content. And, and they may go for it, you know. They may just say, okay, I'll, we'll add a link in and, and we'll get you get you off our back. Yeah. Yeah, I've definitely. I mean, it... does anyone know Wondershare? I've never heard of it. No, never heard of it. Must be famous somewhere. Mm. Okay. Well, I think we've covered this one. If there's no objection, we'll move on to number three on our run list. Nathan Gadai. Um, is uh, using the title equals hover text for, for hyperlinks good SEO practice? Uh, does it matter to Google, but um, he goes on to say, he said, can I use this instead of alt when the image itself uh, is a hyperlink or it is supposed to be in addition to alt? I don't get what I don't get that. The title property, the title attribute, is something that's shown when you hover over something, whereas the alt is 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 a is a different attribute that's generally used for screen readers. So when you hover over something with alt, it's not necessarily going to come up with, with title. It's usually shown in a tooltip. And but, some CMSs automatically convert your alt to a hover text some some do right uh n no it, it doesn't really matter um it, to me it wouldn't really matter um and you know i mean um uh, like uh, i'm just concerned that you're going to start overthinking this you don't want to be providing one sort of flag keyword in the in, in the hover title and then and then in something else in the in the in the alt <laughs> uh, the alt image text and then something else in the actual file name I mean then you can start creating a little bit of a mess for yourself yeah I, I think historically Google ignored the title the title attribute that was my recollection of it i'm not sure like i've never seen i haven't seen this discussed in a long time and i don't know that anyone's tested it but historically i'm i'm pretty sure that they ignored what was in the title attribute um and that they used what was in the alt tribute for images that was that's my recollection yeah i think i'd make sort of two remarks the first one is that um i don't think hover tech I mean, I don't think the title will appear if you're using a mobile device. It's only on desktop and laptop um, browser that you see title appear. And second is that if you're using image as sort of link to do something for you, um, and if you feel that you need to have title on it, then the image is not doing the function that it should be doing, if that makes sense. You know, it should be obvious for the user that seeing the image file that it serves that particular function. So, you know, if it's an arrow pointing rightwards or leftwards and say it's the next page, um, you don't want to have a, t a sort of a tooltip appearing saying this is the link to the next page because, it, you know, your design should be obvious that the arrow means certain thing to the user. So does it make sense to have that? Is it isn't it over, information overload to have you know, title in addition to the image or graphic? Thank you, Masataki. Um, all right, let's move on to the next. Unless somebody else has something to add to that. Maureena Floor Kirby uh, asks a question that's titled Publishing the same article to multiple websites. Um, 
Marina goes on to say, uh, in regards to unique content, if a writer usually writes an article, publishes it on her website, uh, and then pitches the same exact article to be published on a few other uh, websites, should the text be unique for each of those submissions, or could there be the same content across different websites? Thanks. So um, I replied with something for Marina to actually think about rather than giving you a like a total straight answer there. Um, you know, if if you pitched the same piece of content to uh, a business, a company, or uh, another site, or whatever the case, wherever it was, and they took it on face value, somebody was a new new person, never did a check on it, thought it was new and published it. Uh, at some point, they may realize that it wasn't legit when, obviously, if they are checking, you know, then all of a sudden they see the same thing appearing under the, you know, the other, the, the other, you know, your article that's already been published and they're sitting side by side or, uh, or and then they might see another company with the same one, you know. So firstly, from a professional point of view, you're going to tarnish your reputation straight off. They'll, they, they won't ever entertain anything from you again. Um so, so like, just don't do it, you know, and, and nine times out of 10, they'll probably remove that anyway, once they do realize further down the line. Um, and the other thing is, if you if it does get published by multiples, um, at some point, Google will start filtering uh, them out there. And then again, the ones that are filtered, uh, when they check to see theirs isn't live, but then they see another three versions of it from three other different sites. And again, you know, your reputation is is, is is in the bin. So, you know, to forget about thinking of from an SEO or whatever or a clever point of view or anything like that. You know, if you start chucking these out there, you, they're never going to use you again. They'll never trust you as a business or or as an editor or as a whatever you whatever you may be. Um, and you're going to just you know damage your own reputation. So, yeah, I mean, from that point of view, you know, it's like trying to sell the same car to five people. It's, it, it's, it's crap. Thank you, Tim. I see we've just been joined by Micah Fischer-Kirchner. Okay. All right, let's go on to the next... We're up to number five on our run list, Micah. All right, this one is from Nathan Gadai also. Um, it's uh, titled Absolute URL versus Relative uh, URL. He said, my links are um, colon, semicolon, sorry, um, apostrophe <laughs> page one.htm and not... Um, a full uh, URL. He said, are they considered juice links or should I fix it? Uh, I use I use those links to keep the site compatible um, with migrations. So Richard, you, you spoke to him um, uh, through the week saying, not sure what you're asking here, what links, where. I think when I looked at it, I definitely didn't see an absolute URL versus relative URL. I think that might have changed uh, as different people asked. Uh. Or I might be blind. That could be possible also. <laughs> yeah, I just see uh, Federico Sasso, uh, who uh, um, has just spent the week in hospital um, with COVID. Uh, 19, um, he uh, found enough energy and strength to uh, answer a question on dummy yeah, questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm I, I'm usually of the thing, unless the site's you know, at a larger size, the relative URL is not the biggest issue. Um, but as the site gets bigger and more complications, it's usually better to 
switch over to an absolute URL structure to avoid any potential confusions that the bot might have of, of your URLs. Um, there's really no need to have them be relative for migrations because it's not like you're going to be doing them very often. And the the setup that you're you're looking for, although all the work is mostly going to be the same. Um, so I, I'm usually a fan of both. If, if the site's large, it should be absolute um, versus having it be relative. But generally at a smaller size, it's not the, the thing I would be focusing on. Thank you, Micah. Anybody else on this one? Okay. Now we're now on number, uh, number six set on our own list. Chris Heidelberg gets uh, Chris Heidelbohr, Heidelbohr, I guess, um, renting an office uh, in a, a populated city. Um, apart from Chernobyl, um, I think there, there must be plenty of populated cities. Um, yeah, renting an office in a populated city. Um, Chris said, "Hi, SEO friends." He said, "I have an odd question." Um, would you consider renting an office in a populated city in order for potential leads uh, from Google My Business? I live out in the country and I'm, I'm considering renting an actual office to go into work each day. But I'm, I'm curious if having a, a physical location makes any difference really in terms of uh, Google Maps and Google My Business uh, going into 2021. So... I'd say one of your biggest ranking factors is your physical location uh, in GMB, but that also depends on where the person is querying it from. Uh, if they're just using an actual specific query, I don't know what you do, Chris, but let's say you are, um, I don't know, just, just say, for example, graphic designer. If they search graphic designer uh, in your location, um, or near in that city uh, without the modifier, yes, your physical location is, is, is massive. If they are sort of just outside and they're actually looking for that city space, again, it is, it is crucial, but you could then still, because they're adding the query in, you could actually rank for that. Um, just by optimizing and, and working with your GMB, you could actually be putting yourself in the three pack for that. Now, the other thing that I want you to think, like, you know, before you go, so it is important. It's very, very, very important. However, it also depends, and I think I asked a follow-on question, but I haven't got the answer. The other question is, I'm assuming customers come to you uh, uh, for, you know, as, as, so, you know, you're not a service area business, as in, you know, just uh, selecting a, because that would be a different if you're a service area business because you could also optimize for that city as a service area business and be still and stay in that location. Or you could just, you know, use that rented office address. I didn't say that, but you could use that rented office address and have it as a service area business. So that's also quite important. But the other thing I would so certainly before you go and start, uh, yeah, look, Donna just said use a co-working spaces address that, uh, actually is a violation of Google guidelines. Now, the new guidelines, um, and co-working space, violation of, yeah. So yeah, you, you gotta, you gotta be careful. If you're gonna go and rent office space before you go and do that, because that's a financial commitment on you and your business, are you ranking organically already for those particular search queries? That you, you know, not, not you know, the three pack actually organically. I would probably start working on that before you make a financial commitment to then go and get some office space just for some visibility in the three pack. Um, because, you know, there are other factors in ranking in the three pack and it's not only just, you know, uh, your sort of um, actual location because there could be another 25 graphic designers all in the same city center. Uh, so it's not a guarantee. You know, you do need to put some some work into it. So before you make that commitment, make sure you're on page one first, at least organically, somewhere on the page, you know, um, <laughs> before you make that financial commitment. 
Thank you, Tim. All right, let's move on to number, no, actually, there isn't a number seven. Um, I'm fairly sure it is thank you for watching time. Yep. Um, okay, so before we go, I, I must point out people like Michael Martinez and uh, Adam, Adam uh, Humphrey, John Humphreys, um, pe two people who just always amaze me on, on the depth of their knowledge People like Brenda Malone, who uh, answer questions uh, throughout the week. People like Richard Hearn, Tim Kapp, um, and Micah. Um, yeah, um, and and you guys turning up um, e every week. Um, it's just uh, you make, you make uh, dumbass yeah questions so useful. Anyway, we'll be back uh, at the same time next week. Um, but for now, um, it's um, good night. Uh, as soon as I figure out which button to click. <laughs>